kind of fell flat because it didn't have an answer to the uh, the shrine deck. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like we've seen Isaac like using the Delmise to adapt to that. So. Uh, even though I think it fell out of favor in the eyes of most players, but Isaac's found a way to make it work here in this new format with uh, the Shrine decks being so popular. And Scott's playing Zork Galissapod, a deck we haven't seen yet today on stream, but one we should all be well familiar with. As we see Isaac get going here, attached to the active, and Lilies for three cards, uh, four cards actually, draws himself uh, uh, up to eight on his opening turn. Yeah, I do see a Nest Ball here, so he's going to grab the... Uh, Grubbin, obviously, you know, really all you want on the first turn is just a Grubbin uh, in play. You know, Ray is good too, but as long as you get the Grubbin down, the deck has so many uh, ways to get to the turn two Vika Vault that um, just one Grubbin, it's pretty beefy for a basic. Uh, so this is a this is a perfect opening hand for Isaac. Yeah, he got everything he needs. It looks like uh, he does play three copies of Volkner in his list, which is a bit higher than I think we've seen from a lot of the lists online. But really just opting for that consistency of finding the rare candy. We already see he has the Vika Volt in his hand at least. So on his next turn, he could find the pieces he needs to um, to get that turn to Vika Volt. And we're actually going to see Scott get going right away here with a Pokemon Fan Club. Uh, interestingly enough, Scott could theoretically get a knockout this turn on this Rayquaza. He does play the Dedenne from Forbidden Light. It does 30 damage plus 30 more if you have a Lightning Pokemon on your bench. With a choice band, that's 90 times 2 for Rayquaza's GX's weakness. 180, perfect math to knock out Rayquaza. Yeah, the uh, the emergence of Rayquaza uh, forced players to kind of think of creative ways to deal with it. Mm. Um, Fairy Tapu Lele was kind of the most popular one, but Deden has actually shown up as a, as a more viable alternative for decks with double colorless energy. Um, yeah, Scott could have gotten it last turn with the, or this turn with the Pokemon Fan Club. He did have the DC in hand, but no choice band, so... That also might have been just like a little too fast of a start, maybe. Sometimes you just want to value your setup more, because he would have had one less Zerua in play. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, over to Isaac's turn. We'll see if he can find the rare candy. There it is. He's got it. Turn two Vika Volt up and running, and with the energy we see in his hand, he will easily be able to take a knockout on this 110 HP Tapu Koko this turn. Yeah, he does have the attach as well, so this is uh, this is about as good of a of an opener here as you want if you're Isaac. Uh, he, he has a Lele for a supporter as well, so he can dig and find additional Rayquaza to put more energy in play. Um, and attached to the Delmise. I mean, this is, this is very, very good for Isaac. Scott probably does not want to see this. Yeah. Uh, Isaac here, now, I think at this point in the game, you usually actually don't even want to use Rayquaza's Stormy Winds ability. You're already up and running. There's definitely potential for it to just be more harmful than helpful where you can discard important things like Energy Recycler and Guzmas that you need later on in the game. So looks like he's not going to use the ability as we see there and just attaches the energy. So I would definitely like to see that from Isaac. Smart play. Yep. Yep. And now, you know, in his new hand, pretty much all he wants to see, you know, he'd like another Candy Vika Volt, um, you know, to just totally flood the board with energy. But honestly, he's fine. Just, you know, maybe Guzmas, uh, just additional energy to attach. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he's taking the knockout here. He's just going to want to try to make sure he can knock out a Zoark on the next turn. And over on Scott's turn, it's going to be difficult for him to respond to this start from Isaac. Um, you know, he can find Kukui plus Devoured Field Choice Band, but that's a lot of cards to ask for when your field is nothing but two Zeruas. Yeah, definitely. Um, in addition, losing the Coco is important because that's his yep. free retreater. So now... You know, he's even more pressed to find a way out of this situation. Yeah, and not, and not only is it his free retreater, it's also something he needs on the bench in order to do the extra damage with the Dedenne from Forbidden Light. Um, and we, he'll have to, you know, he does have, I believe, one copy of Rescue Stretcher in his list, so he can get it back if he draws into that piece later. But looks like for now he's just going to have to be content uh, to hitting this Rayquaza GX. You know, uh... Something interesting is, you know, in the past, um, cards like N might have might have helped uh, in the later stages of this game, but Isaac just plays off the board. So mm -hmm. now that he's got this Vika Volt, there's nothing Scott can really do to, like, kind of slow him down, um, especially with a start like this. We do see the Deden in his hand, uh, but nothing else really. And actually, uh, I think in his hand he has that second Tapu Koko, so he does play two, okay. which is interesting. I think we're typically used to seeing people people just play one. Um, so it's interesting he's playing the second one and will definitely come in handy here if he wants to, uh, you know, be able to attack the Rayquaza for a one-hit knockout with a Dedenne. 
playing Tapu Lele, probably just taking a supporter to thin. I mean, maybe use it for next turn, but I don't really know what supporter is going to be terribly useful here. Yeah. Maybe just a Cynthia or something. Yeah, he's already played his Cynthia for turn, so I think, yeah, it must just be taking it for next turn. Wants to dr have higher odds to trade into other things uh, this turn. Maybe have higher odds to trade into things like additional Zoark GXs, additional Zoruas. Um, so I don't hate him pulling it out of the deck, but I also think you could have just, um, you know, waited for a turn and just kind of seen uh, what you drew off of your trade. Uh, he's got an Ultra Ball in his hand. Don't believe he's traded yet, has he? I don't think so, no. So he must really just value the cards in his hand and not want to trade at this point. My guess is maybe he did. He had a Grass Energy in his hand, which isn't really going to do anything right now. Mm -hmm. so I feel like I would have traded that, but he, so he must have must have traded already. All right, so we see on Isaac's turn, has think, an Ultra Ball in his hand. If there's another Rare Candy, he could get a second Vika Volt out. I think I saw a Volkner in his hand as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all he needs this turn to get a knockout is one energy to attach from hand and then two energies from the deck with Strong Charge. That will be enough to knock out this Zork GX, and uh, that would just be a commanding lead, I think, for, for Isaac at this point. And he does have it. I think if I'm Isaac, maybe I, I put these, I at least put the grass on the Delmize, um, so you can you have an answer to the Deden if Scott brings it up in the next turn. Sure. Um, and then you can put the other energy on like the Ray or kind of wherever it is. Wherever else, he's thinking about both on the on the Delmize, but yeah, I, d I kind of agree. I kind of like spreading them around, like you were saying on the different uh, Pokemon. But I guess if he's going to attach an energy from hand, he can attach it to a Rayquaza this turn. So I think he'd ideally like to end this turn with two energies on that Rayquaza GX. He's thinking about discarding it. Interesting. So he doesn't quite have the knockout yet. Oh, he's oh. got another Vika Volt. Does need to play a rare candy though, and yeah, that's going to be a lot of. Energy. I think he just tried to. He hasn't played a rare candy yet. Yeah, for that, I'm not sure. Oh, oh, there, there it is. Go. And now he's. Is he using Guzma? I'm not really sure yeah, why I that got Guzma discarded. Yeah, I think Guzma is in the discard that shouldn't be in the discard. I think. Yeah. We'll see if. Yeah. I think because he discarded the Ultra Ball, and the Lightning Energy. I thought, but maybe he's... he may he may have discarded the Guzma with the Ultra Ball, but I'm not sure. Maybe he's using Guzma to pull up the Deden or something. Not really sure what's happening, but um, I think there should. I think there's a Guzma in the discard pile that should be in Isaac's hand, but we'll see if we can get that looked at. Uh, I don't think he played the Guzma, so we'll just, we'll we'll get that looked at real fast. And uh, these guys are just adding up the damage in play. It's pretty crazy that on this third turn of the game, Isaac already has two Vikavolts set up, right? And the thing is here is, you know, even if even if he promotes this Deden and knocks it out, the Rayquaza is already damaged. He has to two-shot it anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, it's... He's kind of... He's okay, so, so looking at his discard pile, I think he may have Ultra Balled away the Guzma, the, w the way they just showed it. So we, I think we're okay. Okay. So he did... It's been clarified he did Ultra Ball away the Guzma. Okay. Um, so now, if I'm Scott, obviously grabbing a Zork, you want to at least try and find, like, another Zerua, I would guess, um, off these trades. He's got a Cynthia, so he'll get you know, fresh six plus the trade. Wants a double as well. Doesn't need the choice ban, luckily, this time. Yeah, and it's interesting. I wonder... I don't know. It's like, would you even want to take the knockout with the Dedenne? I guess so, right? And you just have to hope to find a rescue stretcher on the next turn to reuse it. Um, attacking with the Zoark seems bad because with double strong charge, Isaac will certainly have enough energy to take the knockout on the Zoark. And then you're down to just one prize left. So Scott's just, he's in a tough spot at this point in the game. Yeah, definitely. See, six cards here off the Cynthia. There's a double colorless, so he'll have those options available to him. We haven't seen a single Wimpod come into play yet for Scott. One of the most frustrating things in Pokemon uh, just happened to Scott, where some of the cards are upside down and <laughs> others aren't. Yeah, definitely not a fun thing to experience. An unwinnable situation <laughs> just got worse for Scott. But he attaches to Lele, so, you know, he's kind of, maybe he's forcing him down to one prize. Um, I mean, it kind of doesn't really matter who he knocks him out. Lele is probably the safest knockout here. It's uh, interesting. He only needs one more energy, and he'll be able to knock out this Lele. Going down to just one prize left, and Delmize will be able to knock out Dedenne. Um, so I think I really would have liked to have seen Scott attack with Dedenne there and just hope for the best, but it's already looking pretty bleak. Yeah. 
Um, he now now Scott is, or now Isaac is kind of free to use Stormy Winds. You know, he doesn't really care what he discards because he's he's got the board that he wants. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what Scott's going to put active. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would have liked the Dedenny as well because then you can stretch it back and still force your seventh prize. Um, or force him to have a Guzma at least. I mean, Isaac's, you know, I think it's safe to say Isaac has this one in the bag. Yeah, there's just so many energy on the board. He has yet to play an energy recycler, so, like, he has many options to get energies back into the deck. Um, yeah, it's. I think this one's going to be in the books for Isaac here very soon. Yeah. Let's have a Lily. He can draw a couple cards here with that. So he's got a treasure. He can keep thinning cards out here. I guess at this point, if you're Isaac, you're just kind of scared of things like Judge. So you might want to thin cards out that are kind of useless at this point. So we'll see if he plays the treasure. Looks like he's going to hold it. Treasure can still be an out to something like a Tapu Lele, though, so might want to ha hang on to it for that reason. I just don't know what Scott is digging for. Maybe he's just trying to get some more information on Isaac's deck, I would imagine. I mean... Yeah, he could... I mean, he could knock out this Rayquaza with the Zoark if he was to find a full bench plus Kakui, Choice Band, Devoured Field. Um, sure. So maybe he's playing to that out. I think I do see the Devour Field in his hand. Um, and maybe even a Choice Band as well. Looks like he's going to play the two Nest Balls. So that'll get him the basic Pokemon he needs. Does he have the rest of the combo, though, is what it's going to come down to. I think he already traded. And if I'm Scott, I probably would have played these Nest Balls first. You want to thin your deck as much as possible uh, in this situation to try and maximize your chance of hitting Stuff like Kakui or Choice Banner Double, so... Sure. It depends on what he had. Like, if he already had those pieces, then I think it's fine to trade first. Um, it just kind of depends on what is in his hand. Um, see the DCE. Does he have the Choice Band? I think I see the Choice Band. It looks like he's actually just going to Guzma the Delmize. That's interesting. Yeah, and maybe he's hoping Isaac doesn't have enough energy. He does need two more energies in order to knock out this uh, Zoroark GX. So yeah, we're just going to see the Riotus beating. Thanks to the Devoured Field, 130 will knock out Delmize. And there's the Guzma. That's all uh, Isaac needs to take a knockout on that Zeru on the bench. Yeah. So a pretty convincing game one there from Isaac. It, it seems like Scott just honestly got a little run over there. Yeah. The winds sure are stormy for Scott here. A little bit of a... Uh, is it Hurricane Maria? Florence? Florence, yeah. Jeez. It's a, it's a good try. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so... <laughs> yeah. So we have... moving into this second game, what are we going to want to see from Scott different? Obviously, he's going to get to go first, which is an advantage in its of itself. Um, but what's he going to want to make happen that he was unable to do in the first game? I mean, I think the biggest thing is he needs to get more Zorak in play. He needs to actually be able to draw. Um, if he can get those going, he has a much higher chance of being able to cycle the Deden and actually use it um, to, to put a lot of pressure on Isaac. But... Um, you know, hopefully he can start a Tapu Koko and not have it knocked out immediately um, and immediately be on the back foot like that. So um, really, probably just hitting nest balls, getting Zeruas down, yeah. and going from there. Yeah, being able to utilize trade, definitely super important for these Zoroark decks. I mean, I think Scott only had one Zoroark GX in play at a time that game, which is just not what you want to have happening whenever you are playing a Zoroark deck. Yeah. So we'll see Isaac and Scott shuffling up. Um, ideal scar starters for Scott, probably like you said, that Tapu Koko, just because it gives him all that mobility. And Isaac's first turn, it's very unlikely that he would be able to get a knockout on the, the Tapu Koko. I actually am not sure that's even possible. I don't think so. <laughs> well, no. no, I mean, he does play one switch. He could, uh, well, no, there's no more Max Elixir in the format, so right. I actually don't think it could happen. He could probably put the requisite energy in play. Yeah, he could get four energy in but, play. But, yeah. But not enough. He couldn't get three on one Rayquaza. But, I mean, the way he was drawn last game, it's very possible. Yeah, his his setup was definitely just perfect. And something interesting about this Rayquaza Vikavolt deck is going second, you really don't mind because you get to utilize Tempest GX on your first turn, which right. is just one of the strongest GX attacks. And being able to get a huge hand... It almost ensures you're going to be able to find Rare Candy plus Vika Volt. Yeah, Tempest GX, Rayquaza's GX attack. Uh, discard your hand, draw 10 cards. Um, that rivals only Drampa's Big Wheel um, in terms of, you know, pure consistency GX attacks. Um, but, uh, yeah, like you said, it pretty much guarantees the Vika Volt with energy and whatever supporter you want to play. So, um, Scott will need to get a good setup and hopefully find a judge 
uh, as well to counter that sort of thing. So judge will be important for Scott to find. Hopefully he gets a basic here. I think I see a Wimpod. Um, oh, he has two Wimpods and a Zerua as well. Okay. So he's got options. I definitely like, you know, starting the Wimpod is also great just because you have that Wimp out ability on your first turn. And he does have a Nest Ball as well in his hand. You see him draw second Zerua. Oh my goodness, he's going to have so many basics in play this turn. He's got an Ultra Ball too, so he can uh, find a, a Lele for a Lily uh, and completely refill his hand as well. He's got some GX Pokemon in his hand. I can't tell if it's a Lele or maybe a Zoark, but uh, he does at least have that Ultra Ball. Nest Ball here, we'll see what he grabs. Grabs a Coco. This is good. He can retreat into the Coco, uh, still maintain his free retreating. That's a Zoark in his hand. He'll toss the other Wimpod and grab a Lele, almost certainly. Yeah, and Lily here just seems so good from Scott. Drawing seven cards off the top is just insanely powerful, and it's going to ensure that he has so many options on his second turn of the game. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if I'm Scott, maybe I can find a Grass Energy. That'd be good. Mm. Throw that on a Wimpod so sure. I can have that throughout the rest of the game. Um, other than that, probably, a, you know, maybe the bench spot stays open so he has a Dedenne play the next turn. Um, or just grabbing a Zorak and trying to chase down, like, uh, Grubbins. Sure. Um, nice. see seven cards off the top here. We'll see if he can find an energy to attach, or um, potentially another Zerua, something like that. I see, I think, a couple of Zorak GXs, so we're going to see a lot of trades from Scott next turn. Treat to Coco, and he'll pass. So no energy, unfortunately, but other than that, things were looking good. Interesting over on Isaac's side, he... Uh, started Tapu Lele and then has a Rayquaza GX on the bench. I think maybe he took the Rayquaza off a of Mulligan potentially. Um, no Grubbin yet. He definitely wants to find a Grubbin this turn, like we it's said last game. He's got a Marshadow. Marshadow's let loose ability. Uh, it's the same as Judge. Both players shuffle their hand in and draw four. Um, it kind of is. It's like playing two supporters on the first turn if you played a draw supporter, or in his case, Guzma and a draw supporter. So he just needs a Nest Ball or a Grubbin. Um, and then he can Tempest his small hand away and draw 10 cards, whereas Scott will be stuck with a four-card hand. So this could potentially be huge for Isaac. Yeah, all Isaac, like you said, wants here is one of his four Ultra Ball, one of his Nest Balls, or one of his three Grubbins in order to put a Grubbin in play and then go Tempest GX. So pretty crucial four cards here. Let's see if he can get it. Uh, Looks like there's a Grubbin. Yep. Nice. Perfect. Looks like it's going to be Tempest GX... 10 cards off the top, and uh, let's see if Scott can find that judge or not. I see Man, a Cynthia in his hand. He has nothing but that Cynthia, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and this Wimpod, Wimp, Wimpod's Wimpod ability only works on the first turn, so that Wimpod is now going to be stuck in the active spot, even if it evolves, um, which is not really what Scott wants right now. Yeah, I mean, he'll be able to, on this next on this turn, first impression still for 60, which does set up the Zo uh, the Rayquaza to be more easily knocked out by something like a Zoark, or even a Crossing Cut, or uh, a, um, a Armor Press, I should say, from the Galissapod with a Choice Band. So uh, it still sets some numbers up. Uh, it's definitely not as powerful as first impression normally is for this deck, though. Let's see what he gets. He needs to find a Galissapod here. Definitely wants Zoarks as well. There's one Zork. I see a Grass Energy in his hand as well. Looks like he's going to trade away Enhanced Hammer. Pretty useless in this matchup. I don't think I see it, or a way to get it. And no Ultra Ball, no Galissapod. Does have a replacement Wimpod. Um, and this could just be what Isaac needs to just steamroll this game from here. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's got a Grass. I would consider maybe attaching the Grass. Oh, he attached yep. to the active already. Yep. He did attach for turn already. Uh, maybe just really hoping to find that Galissapod and maybe got a little punished for playing that way. Didn't quite get there. Isaac has the candy Vikavolt in hand with another Rayquaza. Jeez. So we are about to see a ton of energy come into play. He rips an energy off of Stormy Winds. Um, there's already one in there, but this doesn't really discard too much of value also. Yeah, he doesn't really mind discarding Nest Ball. He's pretty set up at this point. He doesn't really mind the Choice Band. He'll be able to get lots of energies in play, so the added numbers might not be as relevant or necessary um so yeah not a bad discard at all from isaac see he does have an ultra ball in his hand there's that vika volt you were mentioning maybe he wants to find a second grub in here 
Let's nothing, have a Lele nothing as in well. his field. You know, the Vika Volt uh, crossing cut GX from Glissopod will knock it out. But other than that, um, it's not really in danger of being knocked out in one hit. So, you know, maybe he values the be the open bench spot right now. It gives him utility with Lele for a Guzma, sure. for example. Um, he still has attached for turn as well. So, uh, this is very good. He has the Delmize in his hand. I I wonder if you think he'll bench that, maybe to be able to have a something to send up and respond if Scott is able to pull off the Dedene play. Yep. Uh, we'll see if he wants to get that ready. And he does. He's got energy to attach, so he'll probably attach to that Delmize. Um, yeah, it looks like he'll, he has a Grass in hand, so I think that should go on the Delmize most likely. I could also see maybe wanting to go ahead and power up the Rayquaza, but no, Delmize is going to get that energy this turn. Spreading your energy out and leaving yourself with options for the next turn. Yep. So now Scott's got to figure out. You know, obviously, he wants that second Zorak down. Um, and other than that, you know, I the Dena is the biggest thing here. Um, mm. Just immediately knock out this Ray, kind of set Isaac back energy-wise a couple of turns. But um, oh, it's interesting. Scott uh, has energies in his hand. He could attach, but he also has a Cynthia. Here, if you're Scott, do you just attach to Wimpod and maybe try to first impression? Or do you just Cynthia those energies into the deck and really hope to draw the Dedene? You have no trades left. Uh, you could still draw another Zoark. I think Scott's just found himself in a tough spot. I think if I'm Scott, I think, you know, a Dedene play... Oh, never mind, actually. Uh, yeah, looks, looks like he's like just going for Zoark. I think he's saying this might be a little more likely for him. Oh, he could have a Kakui in his Guzma. hands. He does have a Guzma. So this is interesting. So now this sets up a two-hit with Flying Flip, um, mm -hmm. knocking out the Vika Volt on the next turn. And um, Isaac's bench is totally full, so uh, there's no way that he'd be able to get another Grubbin out to prepare to have a second Vika Volt in play on that next turn. So Scott, you know, making the best of what he has been dealt with. Yeah, if Isaac has a Guzma, um, then he can, you know, still flood a bunch of energy onto the board and take a knockout and not really care too much mm -hmm. if Scott devotes an entire turn to using Flying Flip, which is otherwise kind of low power. I would have maybe liked killing the Delmize here. Um, I, I don't really know. Yeah, it's a tough spot, I think. Uh, Isaac's kind of debating what he wants to do here. I'm not sure if he has a switch card or a Guzma or anything. He could manually retreat the Vika Volt by attaching and then double uh, strong charging to twice to it. It does have a three retreat, so it's a little difficult to get out of that active spot um, without a switch card. Yeah, it's weird. Vika Volt, like, flies. <laughs> so, you know, I don't really know why it's such a big retreat. But bugs are kind of gross, so I guess I'm fine with it. Makes sense. So he's using Strong Charge right now. We'll see where he wants this energy to go. I'm guessing he probably... You know, I feel like it would have been a lot quicker with this with his Switch cards if he had it. So maybe he doesn't have a switching effect. Yeah, so, this may have bought Scott the turn he needs, honestly. I see a lot of energy in his hand as well. Oh, maybe he does have it if he's opting to just catch it elsewhere. So what he might be doing is he's powering up two different Pokemon... And he's accepting, okay, next turn, I'm not going to have a Vika Volt in play. But I still have a ton of energy cards in play. I'll still be able to knock out a Zoark and, uh, or a Dedene. He's leaving himself with options, I think. So I, I do kind of like this. Um, there is a risk of Scott continuing to Guzma KO Grubbins. But if Scott does that, Isaac honestly really wouldn't care as long as he's keeping his energy in play. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, if, and if Scott... Attacks with the Dedena next turn, then that gives Isaac the turn he needs to set up another Vika Volt. Yep. So, um, this is definitely a smart play by Isaac. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, he lost that turn that he was going to try and take control of the game, but, um, you know, this is, uh, attaches to the Vika Volt, which is interesting. Yeah, I like this because it plays around Scott using a second Guzma, um, so you have the option to, like, retreat the Vika Volt if you needed to, if it didn't get knocked out, something like that. You're just keeping multiple energies in play, so uh, I think it's smart play from Isaac, honestly. Scott's going to grab another Zork. Um, you can get long, lots of trades going. Long overdue. Oh, and he's playing a Cynthia as well. You know, really all he wants is maybe a double here, um, just to do that flying flip attack. Um. Yeah, using Flying Flip, I think, is better than Brightest Beating here. I think you uh, are okay with discarding the DC to retreat the Zoark. 
Um, and it, it not only does it knock out the Vika Volt, but it also sets up these Requazas to be much easier to deal with later on in the game. All you need now would be a Choice Band plus the Double Colorless Energy since you have Devoured Field in play. And uh, Isaac doesn't play any stadiums of his own or any way to remove the stadiums. It also puts uh, these Requazas in range of, say, a first impression with a Choice Band and Kukui um, to, to knock it out, or, or even a Riot is beating uh, with a Choice Band and the Devoured Field. So... Um, not not a totally, uh, you know, low-value flying flip. Sure. And it uh, looks like that third Zoark GX is coming out, so Scott's finally got his board set up just the way he wants. Three Zoark GX in play is going to ensure that he's able to draw lots of cards this turn. After the Cynthia, he sees six new cards, and then now he'll see six more off the top of his deck. He has not traded yet. Uh, he just he drew the double off the Cynthia. Um... Maybe he's got cards in his hand he doesn't want to get rid of. He's really valuing them. Wow. Just going to go ahead and take the knockout and spread 20 everywhere. No trades coming out from Scott. That's interesting. Yeah. I would have at least traded. You know, like he had a Coco in his hand, which maybe he values, or, or another Devour Field. But, you know, he has to realize that more cards is better than these yeah, specific I think, cards. I think you want to hang on to the Coco, though, because... If you trade it away and this one gets, like, because you know you're attacking with your other Coco this turn, you want to have the Dedene option still. Um, but yeah, this is still going to be a good turn for Isaac because he will be able to knock out Coco with the Delmize. Uh, I think the biggest thing here from Isaac is going to be getting another Grubbin in play, though. Yeah, Isaac also maybe, um, if he can find a, uh, he does have Ultra Ball, actually, so never mind, yeah. Grabbing the Grubbin here. Yeah, that can find him what he needs. It looks like he's eyeing up discarding two energy, so two energy's going down. He does have two energy recycler in his deck, hasn't played either of them yet. I think there is one in his hand as well. Mm. So uh, he could even go for that this turn. If I'm Isaac, I don't think I'd do that yet. I don't want to put those cards back into the deck. You know, I want to increase my chances of drawing maybe a Vika Volt or something useful, sure. um, and then putting the energy back in. But as it stands right now, this is... Um, you know, it's still good. It'll it'll put Isaac down to four prizes, um, which means all he needs is you know a Lele and a Zork or two Zork or something, mm -hmm. um, which is a turn faster than Scott, who still needs to take. He'll need to take three knockouts still. Yeah. So there is the 130 damage coming out from Delmize, knocking out the Tapu Koko. You know, Delmize was a card I think a lot of people were hyping up coming into the weekend. Maybe a little bit of secret hype coming in uh, in Vikavolt decks in. Uh, things like that, just as because it is able to knock out things like Baby Buzzwell, but Isaac showing it's useful for other things too, knocking out the Tapu Koko. Yeah, he's going to start his trading now. Um, he's a he's a turn behind on the trades, but you know hopefully he can get probably a double, I guess. Maybe he wants a Grass Energy and a Guzma, a Galissapod. He's got to take a knockout here, but. Yeah, he's got to get the knockout, and I think it's got to be with Zoark, unfortunately. I don't think he has anything else that could knock out this Delmize, and all Isaac needs on his turn is one energy card, and he'll have enough damage in play to knock out Scott's Zoark. So I still definitely favor Isaac's position at this point in the game. Yeah, Scott did not get a double colorless, but he did get a Galissapod and a Grass Energy and a Guzma. So he can kill this Grubbin, um but he preserves all of Isaac's energy in play. Yeah, if he knocks out the Grubbin, uh, the Glissabot just like instantly gets knocked out, and then I don't see how Scott ever wins the game at that point. So right. It, it's, it's a tough spot. I'm not really sure what his correct line of play is going to have to be here, though. It's really unfortunate off the three trades there, you don't find a double colorless energy. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's eyeing that Guzma. Um, oh, he opts to pull up the Lele. Interesting. So does he have a choice band as well? Looks like he, he does. does. So okay. that 150 damage, because of the flying flip, is actually going to come in, and he's going to be able to knock out this Tapu Lele. And um, now both Isaac and Scott just need to take two prize cards to close out this game. Isaac does some counting. He's got more than enough to uh, send this Galissapod pack in. Yeah, and him sending up this Rayquaza tells me that uh, he has a way to get a Lightning Energy um, out of his deck. He's playing Volkner. Going to grab a Trainer and a Lightning Energy. Yep. Um, probably an Ultra Ball. Oh, Rescue, Rescue Stretcher. Stretcher. That'll also so grab work. grab the Vika Volt out of the discard. 
Um, he has the candy in hand already. Um, and I believe he has the recycler to shuffle a bunch of energy back in to use with strong charge. Yeah, he's just going to get so many energy in play this yep. turn. I don't know what Scott can do to respond to this. There we go. Isaac also uh, has a bench space open, um, which means he can use an Ultra Ball for a Lele. Um, or I think he just has Lele in his hand for like a Guzma the next turn mm. to clean up one of those bench GXs. Um, Going to strong charge here, obviously. Um, geez, this is... You know, this is what the Rayquaza deck does. Yeah. It, it just, it's so, it gets ahead of you so fast and kind of runs away with games so fast with all this energy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, um, Isaac here, you could go ahead and use the Lele for the Guzma, force Scott's hand a little bit, but you also probably assume Scott plays Judge. Uh, so maybe you want to keep the Lele in your deck since off the Judge, things like Ultra Ball and Mysterious Treasure are still out to find the Guzma, but... I could definitely still see him playing it this turn. It's, it's kind of a tough call, but he's definitely favored at this point. Well, I, I was saying he could use it next turn. Too. Right, sure. Um, so he puts up the Coco. So now he, you know, now is a good turn to use the Den uh, to knock out this Ray and bring yourself down to one prizes and force Isaac to have a Guzma, mm. um, you know, to get out of this even prize thing. But, you know, Isaac's hand is... Isaac hasn't played a lot of cards from his hand. Um, so I don't know what Scott's thinking. He's got two trades left. I think he does just need to draw Choice Band. He has Nest Ball in his hand. Um, I'm not sure how many Choice Bands he has left, though. He had one on the Wimpod that got knocked out, and then one was just on that Glissopod, so he may actually not have a way to knock out this. Well, if, if he can find Dedene and a Kukui, mm, um, that that'll do 80 damage base, which is 160 on the Ray, which will knock it out thanks to that Flying Flip. Yeah. Um, but he's looking at his deck, and I don't see something pink. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, it was at the top. <laughs> Sneaking down there to the bench. He does still have two trades remaining, so like you said, I think at this point it's got to be the Kikui. He does play two copies. I don't think he's played one at this point yet, so they should both be in there, assuming they're not both prized. He's probably playing Ultra Ball just to thin, grab mm -hmm. a Pokemon that he can trade, because right now he doesn't need anything else. He just needs Kikui. Um, I do see it in there. Very few cards in his deck, it looks like. Um, yeah, it looks like he's just going to grab the Lele, maybe just to trade it away, or just, worst case scenario, like you said, thin it out of the deck so that he can get more value out of, you know, potential cards he could draw this turn. Off these top four, he's got to find a Kikui to stay in this one. And he also needs to keep in mind, like, all Isaac needs at this point is a Guzma to close this game out. Trade one. Don't see it in there. Not yet. Still has that last trade. Gonna trade away a Zoark GX. Does he find a Kakui? There's a supporter. Is it Kakui though? I, I think, think that the top card is Kakui. Yeah, I think he did get there. He also has a judge though, so maybe he's gonna actually have to set up a judge play, knowing that uh, in Isaac's large hand he probably has an out to Guzma. I don't know. He's he's got that option now though. Judge or Kakui, which is gonna be He's thinking, I think you have to Kikui here. I mean, I didn't see Choice Band left in the deck. So, oh, but he's opting to judge. Yeah, I think if you judge here, you can um, just hit the Zo uh, the Rayquaza for a decent amount of damage. Sure, you lose your Dedene. Uh, yeah, but that's just like a losing situation. Right. I think you have to Kikui and just hope that your opponent doesn't have the Guzma. Because he would have game next turn with like his own Guzma, for example, on the next Ray. Um, you know, or on, on like a Marshadow or something. I mean, it's... Oh, Scott does play three choice bands. So okay. he could find a choice band here off of this judge. I don't see it. Ooh. I actually didn't know if he had it or not. Yeah, it looks like see. Scott's saying he didn't get there. I think it might be prized. Oh, maybe it, may, it could have been in the deck still. I'm not sure either. But man, what a game from Isaac. Just his deck functioned perfectly that game. And he was able to win two games very, very convincingly here in round number six. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's game one. He went first and got turned.